Interesting childhood growing up there though, because my uh, my family were very poor growing up. We were so poor that we lived in an anorak. Yeah. And I tell you, it was tough growing up in the hood. <laughs> no fuck off, I've got worse jokes than that. So <laughs> 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 that's why I grew up in Suffolk. Have you been there, sir? Have you been to Suffolk? No. Have you not been in this beautiful part of the world? But, as I say, I did have quite a sad child growing up there because uh, this might shock there's a lot of lovely ladies in tonight, but this might shock you. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21 years old. Shocking, isn't it? Fucking John. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But that's what happens in East Anglia when you are an only child. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're back to the incest jokes again. <laughs> So, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't live there anymore though, I've, I've, I've moved to the edge of the West Country now, I don't know if you know uh, Wiltshire. I live in Wiltshire, I live in a, you're not into, you've been to Wiltshire. Again, it's a nice part of the world, isn't it? If you know it, I live in a picturesque little village, lovely little place called Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to Swindon, sir? Yeah. What's your name, man, that's been to Swindon? Alan, Alan, Alan you'll know, Swindon's a shit on, isn't it? It's a dump, yeah. If you know, the rest of you, if you don't know how rough Swindon is, right, it's the only place I've ever lived where the Anne Summers has a back-to-school range. <laughs> When I moved in, I found out that at the end of my road is the local dogging site. Yeah. And I'd say, it's good to see you again, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And he did the thumbs up again. <laughs> You know what I like, I don't know. Bless you. Now here's at the end of my road where I live is the local dogging site, or as my neighbours call it, the Parker Ride. <laughs> so I live there with my wife, I'm married. Who's married? Give us a cheer if you're married. Yay! Listen, give us a cheer if you're not married. Yay! Listen, Alan, you were very happy not to be married. Yeah, you don't, you don't want someone like uh, stopping you from doing the dog indeed, really. You know, you know, you know, you know, so, no, I, I'm not married. I've been married five years now. It's, it's, I'll be honest with you, it's not going out well, but... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. But no, it's, it started off all right, though. It was love at first sight when I first met my wife. So I met her while she was working at a zoo. And there she was, covered in monkey shit. <laughs> Yeah, straight away I thought, she's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm testing your limits. So, uh, <laughs> see where it's going. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's all right. I'm, as I say, I'm married. I've driven, driven and driven from Swindon as well today. I had a bit of a nightmare. I was driving down the road, saw one of those signs that said, Hidden Dip. Yeah, went around the corner, crashed into a tub of guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as last week though, I was doing a gig in London. Where was the London person? Um, here. What's your name, lovely London lady? Nev. Nev? Nav, N-A-V. N-A-V? Yeah. Nav, that's fantastic. You should, have you got someone, a brother called Sat or something? Is, there... <laughs> <laughs> Is it short? Nav D, that's how you say it. Nav? D. Nav D. D. Nav D, okay. Yeah. Are you talking to me like I am slightly special needs in this point? <laughs> Yeah, that's quite fair enough, that's quite right. I'm, I'm a village idiot. I'm, I'm easily confused, very easily confused. Someone told me this the other day, someone told me that 40 is the new 30. Yeah, but you try explaining that to a speed camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nav Deep, Nav Deep, yeah. what a lovely name. And whereabouts in London do you, do you live? Greenwich. Greenwich, ooh, that's, that's quite... Do you live in the night? Is it actually Greenwich or is it Deptford? <laughs> Greenwich, if you don't know London, Greenwich is quite nice. It's all got the Royal like, Observatory and stuff. I'm like, and between Greenwich and Bromley, so... Bromley, yeah. oh, so, oh, so it could go either way. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, so. I, I was driving into London to do a gig recently and I only got as far as the M25 when my car broke down. I had to call out the REC. And, uh, recovery man who turned up there was a lovely fella. He said to me, Tony, he said, if I can't get your car going, I'll pull you off at the next junction. <laughs> I just thought, bloody hell, that is comprehensive road to <laughs> Sad end to that story, though. He got my car going. <laughs> he didn't actually let me go. So, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so married and uh, like, uh, married at the moment, like I say, he's not going well, though. I've never been the luckiest man in love, I'll be honest with you. I've, uh, I've uh, always had been lucky in love. I've been dumped loads of times, as you know, probably more than anyone else, I reckon. And what, and what do you lovely people hear? What do you think is the harshest way to be dumped from a relationship? Text. Text. Most people reckon text, don't they? Uh, nice that you said text. Uh, nice. Graffiti. <laughs> John, have you, have you been dumped by graffiti? <laughs> Alan's put his hand up. Did you, did you dump him by graffiti, Alan? I was going to offer another option. Oh, you're going to offer another option? Take terrible jokes. Take terrible jokes? What are you trying to suggest here, <laughs> Uh, gra graffiti, that's a brilliant one. What, uh, have you heard of someone being dumped by graffiti? What, in the toilet? Uh, basically, dating the time and like, I'm no longer with you outside our school. Outside the school? <laughs> <laughs> I used to work as a teacher at a Okay. <laughs> You're not on some sort of register, are you, John? <laughs> 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 Before Operation U Tree cuts up in here. Oh, sorry, we got too dark. But, uh, no, that's, that's brilliant, like, graffiti. Because I get a different answer to question. I asked what's the harshest way to be dumped. I was at a gig recently, someone shouted out by birthday card. <laughs> that's an episode of, of a reality show, and it was something that's harsh in a Jeremy Card or something. Best answer uh, I ever had, though, I think, was in a comedy club up in Glasgow, up in Scotland. Give us a cheer if you've ever been to Glasgow. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've been everywhere, haven't you? You've been to Glasgow as well. <laughs> Good dogging up there as well. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, if, you, if you've never been to Glasgow, go out there, brilliant party town. If you like your drinking, 
Uh, party in fantastic place, right? But it's got that reputation in Glasgow for being a little bit rough and ready. Glaswegian people, lovely friendly people, salt the earth, but they are hard as nails, right? You would not cross a Glaswegian. And so I was in this comedy club in Glasgow, asked the people there the same question I've asked you lovely people. I said, what's the harshest way to be dumped from a relationship? And I got the most stereotypical Glaswegian answer. It's this huge fella in the front row just shouted out, Bay cross ball! <laughs> Confused, ladies and gentlemen. I went to a bookshop today, and I'll be honest, that confused the hell out of me. Saw one of these books. It was called 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. Yeah, didn't suggest a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> get confused by a lot of questions as well, like can you get acupuncture to cure pins and needles? <laughs> and is Cajun chicken the opposite of free range chicken? <laughs> Okay, two vibrators come with a list of dill do's and dill don'ts. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on a bit of a health kick. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this. I'm on a bit of a health kick. Uh, I was quite pleased this year because I was asked if I'd run the London Marathon for charity. Yeah, I had to say no. Yeah, mainly because I've no experience of organising an event that big. <laughs> Well, I did think, I've had this genius idea, right? I thought, if I ever run the London Man, did anyone watch it? It was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you didn't watch it, Alan? There's a few people over there watched it. It's, I love the London Marathon. Uh, Nav, Nav, you must have lived quite near to the route, didn't you? Like Greenwich? I was in Derby. You were in Derby. <laughs> you, you, you actively avoided it. No, I, I love the London Marathon. I love those people that dress up. That's my favourite bit of it. I love those people that are doing fancy dress, right? And I thought, I've had this genius idea. See what you think, right? But if I ever run the London Marathon, I'm going to do it dressed as a jacket potato. Right, I'm going to get a jacket potato costume, run all 26 and a bit miles. It's when I cross, because when I cross the finish line, and they wrap me in tin foil. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just completes the look. <laughs> so so I, I, do, I do love my sport. As I say, I'm trying to get fit. I, uh, I went to the gym today, jumped on the cross trainer. Yeah, although to be fair, he wasn't cross before I jumped on him. <laughs> I don't know if you lovely people know this, I found out that apparently the word gymnasium in ancient Greek meant naked exercise. Yeah. But you try explaining that to a receptionist at Fitness First. <laughs> and the police. <laughs> so you seem, you seem, considering we're in Derby, you seem quite happy about Leicester winning the, winning the Premier League. Have we got Leicester fans in? Hey. We got one. <laughs> hey, so who's the Leicester fan? What's your name, sir? I Adam, it's fantastic. You must be a cock a hoop at the moment. He is brilliant stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. And who did, have we got Derby fans in? Derby fans yeah. in the yeah. Fans in the playoffs, are you? Because I'm, I'm an Ipswich fan. I gave up on this season ages ago. We've been shit. So, uh, so but I, I drove past the iPro Stadium. It's called now, isn't it? You, you, you're, so you're a fan. Do you go along? Yes. You go along. Has it been alright this season? Do you alright? Up and down, yeah. Up, up and down? Up and down. Is it, are you talking about football or your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> the, the lady there going, no, no, no. It's hard to any up and no going down. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> are you not his missus? What, are you, are you related to him? Because I'm from Suffolk, yeah, funny. <laughs> no, are you, are you, what, what's the connection here? Because it was John, was it? John and, uh, is everyone called John? <laughs> and uh, what's your name, lovely lady? Joe, Joe and John, what, what's your connection with John? We're friends. We're, you're friends for a long time. And then, okay, <laughs> I feel the tension in the room now. It was like, ooh, fuck hell. Uh, did you work together? How, have you been friends? <laughs> you, bless you, you people over here can't see Joe's friend. She was like thinking, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Twenty years. Twenty was it school or anything? Yeah, I think it was friends through friends. And Twenty friends through friends. Just fucking have them. the life coach here said just fucking have them. Are you Darby's agony aunt? Or so, <laughs> oh, you just is that just a dream of yours? <laughs> so, but John, John, you go to the iPro. You're a big Darby fan, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you work there? Are you the manager this week? 
That's more me to the uh, Watford. Um, uh, but, but you were there. What did you do there, John? Um, steward. You're steward. They keep, keep it order and everything. You keep the crowd in check. Because because the crowds. Because that's what I love about football. I love I love the atmosphere. Is it an atmosphere at Derby? It must be pretty good, isn't it? You're doing all right. Because I love the atmosphere. Because I'm a very placid man, right? But when I go to football, that's where I release all my pain and frustrations. You must see this, John. People in the crowd, they let it all go, don't they? They lose control, really, don't they? Because I love the fact that in a, in a big crowd at a football match, you can shout stuff. It's not socially acceptable anywhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Because, for instance, I don't swear very often, but when I'm at the football, if the referee annoys me, right, I can start chanting, Who's a wanker? Who's a wanker? Who's a wanker in the black? Who's a wanker in the black? On Saturday afternoon, 20,000 other people, no one back tonight. Right. But, if I do that on my own, <laughs> Sunday morning in church. <laughs> All of a sudden, that's a different story. <laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, so uh, what else are we going to tell you quickly before we get your second act on? Um, yeah, so I've, I've, I've had a weird week actually. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about I've had quite a busy week, and then I'll tell you, I'll give you a quick life hack before we get your next act on. So, I've had a very busy week. I went to see my granddad this week. Give us a cheer if you've got a granddad. <laughs> No, they're not as popular as they used to be, are they? <laughs> Jesus, what happened in Derby? Is there a granddad? Is there a word as original poisoning incident? <laughs> is it like Logan's Run? You just. One generation then, you're off with that head. Jesus, have we had topical yet? <laughs> I know, I'm 42 years old, I picked a film and then there's some. Do you all know Logan's Run? There's some young people who won't have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Jenny, I... oh, you're having a bit of a <laughs> You're having a moment there, aren't you, Jim? Jim, Jim, Jim when Chenny acts a whore. You wait till you see an American werewolf in London. Look at that. She's in the nip, in the shower. Uh, so you, my, my tape of that <laughs> got quite worn very quickly. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone too far. I've got too much information. <laughs> So, uh, so what, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, busy week. So, my granddad. So, have we not got any granddads in? I must say, Jim, are you a granddad? I am. You're right, you, and you look like a very wise granddad. You, how many kids, grandkids have you got? Two? Fantastic. Which one's your favourite? <laughs> <laughs> both of them, of course, both of them. That's a good answer. No, because I've, I've only got the one granddad left. He's a brilliant old fellow, my man. He's one of these old people that's very wise. Like you, Jim, he's a very wise man. And my granddad's favourite saying is, never go back. He always says, in life, you should never go back. Which I think is why he lost his job. <laughs> As a captain of a cross channel ferry. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know, Callie. That's it. But while I was over there visiting my uh, granddad, my uncle dropped in, and my uncle's what a lot of people would describe as a bit of a ladies' man. Or yeah. well, to use the correct terminology, a pre op transsexual. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've had a very busy week and uh, I thought I'm doing a run of gigs up in this sort of area this week and I thought, I thought today, right, I thought I need to give myself a little bit of an energy boost. Right? So I'm feeling a little bit knackered. Right? So I've, as well as trying to get all fit and healthy, I've got a little bit new aging recently. So I went today, I went and had a coffee enema. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've grown and you all know what this is, yeah, coffee enema. I won't go into too much detail, it's not very pleasant, but it's like a normal enema. But basically you get a cup of coffee, a funnel and some tubing, right? There's no polite way of saying this, but the tubing goes up your jacksy there, up your bum hole. Right? You pour the coffee down the funnel, coffee goes down there, coffee goes up your tube, coffee goes up your backside, right? And in your colon, there's loads of blood vessels for water reabsorption. And what happens is the caffeine gets absorbed instantaneously into your bloodstream, right? And I have to be honest with you, if you're feeling low energy, it's amazing. Right? It really does wake you up. Yeah, it does, however, get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> Don't use a grande americano, it takes forever. <laughs> and don't make the mistake I made. Let the coffee cool down first. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, you've had a good night so far? This has been lovely, hasn't it? It's been lovely. Before, before you get your final act on, I'm going to just tell you a very uh, quick little thing. Firstly, I'll tell you something about me, actually, because my motto in life, I talked about my granddad's motto in life, my motto in life, Lady Owen, is everything I do, always give 100%. Everything I do, give 100%. Uh, which makes blood donation quite tricky. <laughs> but, but I'm actually, I actually gave blood recently. I've, I've learned some blood facts. I'm going to share these with, with you lovely people. Share these with you. Take these away. I made your friends with this. I don't know if you know this. Apparently the most common blood group in Taiwan 
<laughs> there is Taipei. <laughs> Most common blood group amongst pessimists, be negative. <laughs> Optimists, be positive. <laughs> Dyslexics, typo. <laughs> So there you go. And before, before you get your really headline act, I know Joanne is yeah. uh, very, very special. It's going to be fantastic because he's, he's doing a live broadcast back to hospital radio, ladies and gentlemen. So he's certainly going to be fantastic. So uh, and before you go, before I go off and you can enjoy your headline act, I'll, I'll give you one last thing. Right, one last thing, ladies and gentlemen. Take this away with you. If you take nothing else away with you, take this away. Amaze your friends with this, right? So I realised this today. Right, here's the thing. If you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of postman. They get bloody annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's some sort of system. <laughs> so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely lovely, ladies and gentlemen, all the way.